I do want to kind of go over a little bit more about how the transistor works um, because when I start describing other circuits, it'll really help if you know a little bit about how the transistor works. And remember I said that the transistor is just bas basically just a switch. Let's look at Let's look at a typical place where we might have a switch. Let's uh, say, for example, the dome light circuit in your automobile. You know, you open the car door and the dome light comes on. Let's look at a simplified version of that. So here's our car battery and negative ground. And remember, that's that chassis ground symbol that we looked at yesterday. And it's a 12 volt car battery. And the current would leave the battery and presumably it would go through a fuse first. And this is the schematic symbol for a fuse. Then the current goes to the light, the dome light, the light in the roof of your car. And then it goes to the push button switch that's in the door jam of your car. And the schematic symbol for that push button switch would look like this. And then the other side of the switch goes to ground. And as I mentioned yesterday, you can all see that by putting a ground here and a ground here, it's exactly the same as if I have a wire between the two, right? Because the ground is just the metal chassis of the car. Now, this switch, this is the switch that's in the door of the car. When you open the car door, the switch, um, when, you, when, when, the, when the door is closed, this switch is pushed in and it is not making contact there. When you open the car door, the switch retracts, doesn't it? It goes back to its normal position, really, and that shorts these two contacts together. That, makes the, that completes the circuit and the electric current, according to conventional current, according to the schematic diagram, the current will flow out the, the battery like this. It'll go through the fuse through the lamp, through the switch which is now closed. When a switch is closed, it is turned on. When it's like, like a, a closed or a complete circuit. When a switch is open, it is off, like an open circuit. And then to ground, and of course the return path, we've got to have that complete path back up like that, and that's our complete circuit. Now a couple of weird things about this thing. Um, number one, well, one weird thing especially. Number one, you'll notice that the switch is not in the source path, is it? The switch is in the return path. Does it make any difference where I break the current, the break the connection to turn the light off? No. It really doesn't. If I break it in one place, I break the current flow everywhere in the circuit. So, so that's pretty weird. This, this switch, instead of switching the source power on and off, as you'd kind of expect, switches the ground in and out. It's called a ground switch. It's called a ground switch. And this is actually the most common way to control things in electronics. When we're dealing with electronic controls, like uh, turning light bulbs on and off, we very often use a ground switch. Instead of switching the source in and out, we simply switch the ground in and out. Pinball machines are the same way. We'll see this on Saturday. In a pinball machine, to energize the coils in the pinball machine, there's always power going to the coils. Always, continuously. The whole time the game is plugged in and turned on, there's always power to the coils. To energize the coil, they ground one side of it. The, the ground is switched in and out. You'll see what I'm talking about later on. I'm going to show you a lot of examples of the ground switch as we go through the class. It's very common in monitors. Um, in most circuits, instead of switching the power on and off, we switch the ground in and out instead. Uh, it really doesn't make any difference where we break it as far as being able to turn the light bulb on and off. It's much more convenient for us to make and break the ground connection for reasons which you'll see as we go through the class. Well, let's replace the ground switch. This, let's replace this mechanical switch with an electronic switch. Let's replace it with a transistor. And remember that in a transistor, the main switching action is between the collector and the emitter, like that. 
and then here's our return path. I won't ground it here. We'll just do it like this, just to be convenient. Now remember the way the transistor works. As long as the transistor is turned off, there is no connection at all between the collector and the emitter. And just like that open switch in the door jam of the car, you're not going the light's not going to be on. When the transistor turns on, the collector is connected to the emitter. And of course, that's, that closes the switch and allows the current to flow through the circuit. At the moment, for the sake of this demonstration, I don't have a 12 volt battery. I've got a 6 volt battery here. So there's our 6 volt battery. Now, we know that we need a certain amount of voltage on the base of the transistor to turn it on. Remember how much it was? 0.7, right. And here I've got a battery, and the battery is 6 volts. Somehow I've got to cut that 6 volts down to just 0.7. I don't want to put 6 volts on the base of this transistor. It might damage it. What part do we know of that I can use, to, that we've already looked at, that I, can I use to, to cut that voltage down? Resistor. Resistor, sure, absolutely. In fact, I'm going to use a potentiometer. And I'm going to connect, connect the pot like this. One side of the pot I'm going to connect right to the positive side of the 6 volt battery. Make it a nice big long pot here. The other side of the potentiometer I'm going to connect to the negative side. Let's just call that ground here so that we know that that's 0 volts. And the wiper I'm going to connect to the base of the transistor. Now let's think about this for a second. If this side of the pot is hooked up right to this wire, What's the voltage going to be right there? Six volts. six volts, isn't it? Sure, because it's hooked right up to the six volt battery. The voltage is the same everywhere along a wire. It's six volts there. It's six volts there. It's six volts right here as well, isn't it? On the top of that lamp, obviously. <clears throat> the other side of the battery, I'm sorry, the other side of the potentiometer is connected to ground, as is the negative side of the battery. So what's the voltage right down here? It's got to be zero volts. All right, now let's think about this. Suppose the wiper of the potentiometer is all the way down here at the bottom of the pot. What would the base voltage be on the transistor? Zero. zero. Be zero, wouldn't it? I mean, look, it's actually touching ground right there. So obviously the, the, light, the transistor wouldn't be on. If the wiper was all the way up here at the top of the pot, what would the voltage be? It'd be 6 volts, wouldn't it? That makes a lot of sense. Okay, now here, put on your thinking caps. Suppose the wiper was exactly smack dab right in the center. What do you suppose the voltage would be? Three. Sure, of course. I mean, doesn't that make sense? It'd, it'd be 3 volts there. If it's 6 volts up here and 0 volts there, if you stick it right in the middle, it, it kind of makes sense that it would be exactly 3 volts. You'll notice that you didn't ask me what the value of the pot was. You never said, hey, how many ohms is that pot? And really, it actually doesn't make any difference, which is kind of a weird deal. And I, I, won't, I won't go through why that is. But intuitively, I don't give a shit you know, how, it, how it works electrically speaking. Intuitively speaking, if it's zero here and six there, if it's right in the middle, it's going to be three. And that's, that's the bottom line. Suppose the, suppose the wiper is only uh, one-fourth of the way up from the bottom. 1.5, sure. Whoops, 1.5. Sure. So obviously, the higher up we go, the more voltage we'll have on, on the wiper of the pot. So since we only want 0.7 or so, it's going to be down here pretty, pretty far down, isn't it? All right, now let's see how this works. And I have this demonstration circuit hooked up right now. We're going to add a meter to this thing. We're going to add a digital multimeter, and we're going to set the meter to read the base voltage of the transistor. So it's going to be on DC volts. DC volts. We've got this black meter lead. Where are we going to put that? Ground or the negative side of the battery or something like that. And then the red wire will connect to the base of the transistor. Okay, let's see what happens here. I'm going to draw a little chart up here. Well, yeah, I guess I'll draw it up here where people can see it. And 
we're going to take a look at uh, what the the base voltage is doing, and this other side will be what the lamp is doing right at the at the time. <coughs> Right now, the meter is showing me zero volts. Here's the lamp. And the lamp is off. So right now the base is zero volts, zero volts, and the lamp is off. Let's start, in, and I've got this potentiometer here. Let me start increasing the base voltage. Let's see what happens. Point one, nothing's going on. Point two, nothing's going on. Point three, lamp is still off. Point four, lamp is still off. Even at point five, right now I have half a volt on the base of the transistor. Right now, the base voltage has a half a volt on it. The lamp is still off, though. Remember, we need about 0.7 to turn it on, right? Point 0.6. Right there is point 0.6. No, lamp's still off. Oh, there we go. It's just barely starting to glow. Can you, maybe you can't really even see it. If you, if you stand up, you might be able to see it. At 0.66 approximately, 0.66, the lamp has just barely started to glow. It's really incredibly dim. Let's go up a little more. 0.66, Look, it's really coming on now. 0.68. 0.69, looks like that's about as bright as it's going to get, right there at point, at about 0.69 really, but let's call it 0.7 just to make it easy. In fact, that's about as high as I can make it go. Let's call that 0.7. At 0.7, the lamp is completely on now. <clears throat> so, as the voltage increases, even at half a volt, we've got nothing on that lamp. It takes that 0.7 or so to, to get it turned on. Now, remember, 0.7 is an average. The larger the device is, the less voltage it takes to turn on. I, I know that really seems backwards, and when I first discovered that, I thought, what's going on here? Why is that? But a larger device has more surface area on the PN junction, and so there's more electrons cruising around, and it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so at, at half a volt, that thing's still off. I increase it to 0.66, and it just barely starts to come on. But you'll notice just seven, or four hundredths of a volt later, the difference between 0.66 and 0.7 is only four hundredths of a volt. Now the lamp's on completely. So in a way, when I said that a transistor is just a switch, I kind of lied to you, didn't I? Really, it is a switch in that we can make the, the transistor completely off, if you look at the lamp, or uh, we can make it completely on, completely off, completely on. But we can also put it anywhere in between, anything from completely off to completely on. It's completely, continuously variable between completely off and completely on. So, uh, in a way, a transistor is more than just a switch. It can also act like a variable resistor. I mean, if you, if you, if you look at this, what, what it's really doing is, when the transistor's turned off, and there's, I say there's no connection between collector and emitter, there's really millions and millions of ohms there, right? It's, it's like an infinite resistance. It's a tremendous amount of resistance. As the voltage on the base increases, the resistance between the collector and emitter drops, doesn't it? It gets lower and lower and lower because when the transistor is turned on completely, there's no resistance there. It's shorted together. So obviously it's going from an infinite resistance off, and as I make this thing go off, as I make this go a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter, the resistance is dropping between the collector and emitter until finally there's no resistance at all and the light's on completely. 
In a way, what's happened is that this change in voltage has been transferred into a change of resistance between the collector and emitter. And as a matter of fact, that's where the term transistor came from. Transistor happens to mean transfer resistor. It's really how they got that term. You don't really have to know that, but that's what a transistor is. They didn't just make up the word transistor out of nowhere. That's, that's where it came from, transfer resistor, as the, the change in voltage of the base is transferred into a change of resistance between the collector and the emitter. To be honest with you, it wasn't until I hooked up a transistor just like this that I really understood how transistors work. And there's really nothing mysterious about them. It's not like a transistor um, takes in a signal over here and then somehow processes it and spits it out over here. That isn't how it works at all, although, although that's um, what a lot of people think. A lot of people, you know how a transistor is referred to as an amplifier? You know, they say like a transistor can amplify. It's not like the transistor takes a signal in and amplifies it and spits it out. All they're talking about is this, that an itty bitty tiny change on the base, in this case, just this four hundredths of a volt, between, uh, can, can make the difference between something being, let's say, just partially on and completely on. Now, if we add another meter to this thing, we can really get a, a real good idea of how this thing works. I'm gonna add another meter here. And I'm going to set this meter up to read the collector voltage of the transistor. Remember, the first one was reading the base. This one I'm going to connect to the collector of the transistor. Um, here's what's happening right now. The base voltage is zero volts. So the meter on the left is the base. The meter on the right is the collector voltage. You notice the collector voltage is up around six volts. Let's watch what happens as I increase the base voltage. And what we're looking at is the lamp, the base voltage, and the collector voltage. All right. Let's start to increase the base voltage. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. Now look, right here, let me back it down a little bit. At about 0.5, watch the collector voltage. It's going to start to drop now. See the collector voltage start to drop? four volts now. You see how the lamp's a little bit dim? It's come, starting to come on now. The base voltage is going up, the collector voltage is dropping. For instance, yeah, fast. Right now we have, oh, we've got the devil on the meter on the left, 0.666 on the left, and, um, and the meter on the right, the collector voltage, is showing three volts. The light is now real dim. And here's why happening right now at 0.66 on the base, the light was dim. The light was dim because if you remember, the collector voltage is only 3 volts now. The collector is not completely shorted to the emitter. It's not going all the way down to ground. There's still some resistance here. As a matter of fact, if I have 3 volts here and 6 volts here, the resistance of the transistor must be exactly the same as the resistance of the lamp. It forms what we call a voltage divider. You don't really have to know that right now, but, but um, the lamp is dim because it's a six volt light bulb. I have six volts on one side, three volts on the other. What's the actual voltage across the lamp? Three, three. three volts, sure. It's only three volts. No, six minus three is three, not four. <laughs> See here, six minus one, two, three. Okay, three volts left. Um, anyway, so it's a six volt bulb, but only three volts are across it. So that's why we see what we see. Let's see if I can turn this back on now. Flipped over there. There we go. So here we go again. And watch what happens now. As I increase that base voltage just a little bit, that collector voltage drops like a rock. I mean, the, the base voltage is only moving up by thousandths at a time, and look at the look at the collector voltage drop like a rock until it can never go all the way down to zero. There's always a tiny amount of voltage left. In this case, about one tenth of a volt, well, 0.16. The collector can never completely short to the emitter. There's always a, a tiny amount of uh, there's always a tiny amount of voltage that's left. It's what the hotshot engineers refer to as, and you don't have to know this, 
uh, V, the voltage from the collector to emitter, V sub CE. Uh, you, you don't have to know that though. But for all intents and purposes, as far as we're concerned, it's shorted together. And now we have essentially um, zero volts on the collector because it's shorted right to here. Six volts on the other side of the lamp and so the lamp's on all the way. So as the base voltage goes up, what happens to the collector voltage? It drops, right? The collector voltage goes down. Okay. And this is how a transistor works. This is all there is to a transistor. There's nothing mysterious or weird about a transistor whatsoever. That's all it does. You stick enough voltage on the base and the collector and the emitter are connected together. Now this is an NPN transistor. A PNP transistor works basically the same way. There's just one slight difference between them. First of all, when I said that it takes seven tenths of a volt, this is an NPN transistor. When I it, said it takes seven tenths of a volt on the base to turn the transistor on, I lied. It, it does in, in some cases, and in, in this case it, it did, but in actual fact, the base of the transistor is really stupid. The base of the transistor doesn't really know what you're putting on it until it compares itself to the emitter. In order to get an NPN transistor to turn on, the base voltage has to be seven tenths of a volt higher than the voltage at the emitter. The base really compares itself to the emitter. In order to get that NPN transistor to turn on, the base has to be seven tenths of a volt higher than the voltage on the emitter. Now in the circuit we just looked at, the emitter was grounded, making it zero volts and seven tenths definitely turned it on. I mean, we can see it, it's right there on the meter, seven tenths of a volt. You know, right there on that meter for those of you at home, and uh, and uh, and that's fine. But it won't always be like that. For instance, uh, we'll look uh, at some circuits, perhaps today, perhaps first thing tomorrow morning, where we'll have uh, an NPN transistor, and the emitter will have 12.7 volts on it. I'm sorry, 12 volts on it. To get that transistor to turn on, we put 12.7 on the base. We'll look at, when we look at monitors on Thursday, 120 volts on the emitter, 120.7 on the base. The base is really stupid. It's like uh, you put voltage on the base and it goes, uh, 120.7? Oh, I don't know. Let me look at the emitter. Oh, 120. Okay, I'll turn on. You know, it really, it, it just doesn't know you know, what its voltage is at all. It has to look at the emitter. And as long as the base is seven tenths of a volt higher than the emitter, the transistor turns on. That's for an NPN. The PNP, the base has to be seven tenths of a volt less than the emitter. Seven tenths of a volt more negative. That center letter is the base. If it says N, then it's got to be more negative. So for instance, if I were to use a PNP transistor for the same circuit that, to light up the lamp, just a demonstration circuit. Uh, I would actually have to connect it like this. I, would, I couldn't do a ground switch deal. I would have to connect it like this. Six volt battery. How much voltage would I have to put on the base of the transistor to turn it on? 5.3 volts, that's right. Very good. There you go. That's 5.3 volts, sure. 7 tenths of a volt less than the emitter. What's the emitter voltage here? 6 volts, gotta be, huh? It's hooked right up to the battery. The base is 7 tenths of a volt less. In this case, 5.3 volts would turn the transistor on. Now notice also the way the current flows through the transistor. Following the arrows from positive to negative, notice it follows the arrow. See that? Follows the arrow from emitter to collector and then back up again. In the NPN circuit that we just looked at, same thing. Well, no, it still follows the arrow. We had the lamp first. 
See? Same thing. The current still flows following the arrows. So that's if you, if you ever want to trace current flow through transistors and stuff, that's how you do it. it the current, just follow, you just follow the arrow from the collector to the emitter, which is the main current path of the whole transistor. Make sense? Any questions so far? Pretty dang simple, huh? Well, you know, to be honest with you, if you don't remember how transistors work, it's really perfectly okay because as long as you know how to test it, that's the most important thing. Um, and naturally, as I go through the class and we look at more and more circuits using transistors, I'll explain again and again how the thing works. But, but even if you don't get it at all, you really, the, the most important thing is you just have to know how to test it.